the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Dear friends, during this Mass, we like to remember and pray for the following intentions. We remember Nadia Nongantri, David Hestakar. We remember Sister Lita, who was here last year. We remember her birthday too. Also, Father Seferinus Bakla and Father M.A. Isaac. We remember these people and pray for them in a special, special way. We ask the Lord to bless and keep them always in God, God's good health and grace. We also pray for Jerin and Tina who are getting married today. We ask the Lord to bless them, keep them always faithful in His love and keep them united with His grace. We remember for pray Niju K. Koshi who is on his journey that the Lord may Keep him safe and protect him. Let's bring all of the prayers and intentions that we have to this altar. Let's ask the Lord for the gift of forgiveness of the readings of today. Tell us, as we turn to the Lord for his infinite mercy and if we experience his unconditional forgiveness, may we be forgiving as the Lord is. And to the measure that we are, God's forgiveness becomes a reality in us. Let's turn to the Lord, trusting in his mercy and forgiveness. For all our sins against God, one another, for the times we have missed to do the good, we turn to the Lord asking pardon. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call us sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty Lord have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. In those days, the Lord said to Joshua, Today, I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And as for you, command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, when you come to the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. And Joshua said to the people of Israel, Come here and listen to the words of Lord your God. And Joshua said, Here is how you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is passing over before you into the Jordan. And when the soles of the feet of the priest bearing the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan. The waters of Jordan shall be cut off from flowing and the waters coming down from above shall stand in one heap. So, when the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan, with the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as soon as, as those bearing the Ark had come as far as the Jordan, and the feet of the priest bearing the Ark were dipped in the brink of the water, the waters coming down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far away, at Adam, at Adam, the city that is beside Zareth, 
Zarathan, and those flowing down towards the Sea of Araba, the Salt Sea, were cut off, and the people passed over opposite Jericho. Now the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firmly on the dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel was passing over on the dry ground until all the nations finished passing over the Jordan. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response, Alleluia. Alleluia. When Israel came forth from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a foreign people, Judah became his temple, Israel became his domain. Response, Alleluia. Alleluia. The sea beheld them and fled, the Jordan turned back on its course, the mountains leapt like rams, and the hills like yearling sheep. Response. Alleluia. Why was it sea that you fled, that you turned back Jordan on your course? O mountains that you leapt like rams, or hills like yearling sheep. Response. Alleluia. Gospel acclamation. Let your faith shine forth on your servant and teach me your degrees. The Lord be with you. With Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Chapter 18, verses 21 following. Then Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell at the knees before the master, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, his master released him and forgave him the debt fully. But that same servant, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused, and then he went and threw him into the prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to the master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all your debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave, as I had mercy on you? And in anger his master handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So to my heavenly Father will also do to everyone if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. When Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went to the region of Judea beyond Jordan. Large crowds followed him and he cured them all. The Gospel of the Lord. We have two wonderful readings. The first reading that we, we are beginning the book of Joshua. We heard the death of Moses and the next Joshua, the leader, with the anointing as Moses had, begins. And we know 
Moses' assignment was to lead them, let's say, till the river Jordan and crossing over Jordan and the rest is under the leadership of Joshua. And now the crowd that crossed over to Jordan who reached the promised land were not the many. Entire one generation was almost over who had experienced the crossing of the Red Sea. And this new generation, some of them may have seen it, but most of them heard the miracle that the Lord done. And here is another crossing over the river Jordan. And the Ark of the Covenant stands still and the sea divided, Jordan divided, and they walk into Moses, Job, over, Joshua takes over. Dear friends, in all of us, when we do God's work, there is a point to which we are. Beyond it, the Lord will again make leaders for his own work and his work will continue and the anointing will be there as the reading says, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. And that is an assurance. When we do his work, he is close to us. Let's come to the gospel reading of today. This is one of the wonderful readings to, to preach, to practice. The call is very tight. We need to understand this happens in the 18th chapter of Matthew. And Peter, Peter's spirit is little down because 16th chapter, Jesus had called him, get behind me, Satan. So Peter comes in a way to impress Jesus. After having heard yesterday the story, how to win a erring brother, a member in the community, the Lord Peter asked him, how many or how often should I forgive? We know the rabbinic teaching or the Jewish teaching was if uh, your brother or a person sins against you the same, three times it's enough. Three times enough to forgive. Fourth time you need not. So Peter was very generous. Three, he multiplied and made into a whole number seven times. And he expected Jesus to say, Peter, well done. You have, you know, like the other way. But that is not what the Lord says. The Lord says, 77 times now the 77 does not mean you multiply 7 into 70 or in some translation 70 times 7 etc no the meaning needs to be understood in another context of the bible 77 times it is innumerable every time forgiveness the lord forgives us and so too is a calling now if you want to understand the meaning of this we need to go to the book of genesis chapter 4 23 24 there's a wonderful words this is a fifth generation of Cain. We know Cain murdered Abel. There was anger and vengeance. And the fifth generation of uh, Cain, his son is Lamech. So Lamech is a fifth generation and he had two wives and he narrates there an incident to his wives. He calls his two wives and says, Someone anchored me, someone did vengeance, and I did sevenfold, or seventyfold. And the word comes through this. I have killed a man who wounded me, a young man who struck me. And conclusion, if Cain is avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech is seventy-sevenfold. So that is a vengeance that was in the family of Cain. Sometimes we say, suppose there is a sin in me, will it come into my generations, into my family? It will. Let us understand it correctly. Suppose there is a murder in my family or vengeance in my family done. Or take it this same example, unforgiveness. Will God take its effect or will its effect come into the generations that come? Yes, sin has got its effect, sure. That is the story. This man who owned, who owned the master 10,000 talents, and we know what is 10,000 talents? It is almost one, ta one denarii is one day's work, and one talent is six years' work. So you multiply 10,000 into this, it's a huge amount, which means almost the calculation says it is five years work so that is what the master says you own me ten thousand can you pay it back no your family your possessions everything has to be sold to pay back 
Dear friends, the crime of our sins, nothing can pay back. Not even our entire life, not even an entire generations can pay back. But is it there, over with the punishment? No. And that is the assurance. Who can pay it back? The master. The master tells him everything is forgiven. Nothing is there. So whatever be our crime, the one who can forgive us is the one who hung on the cross. I couldn't do anything, but he took everything and forgave. So when I turn to him, whatever be my sin, be in my families, and the Lord is assuring us he has forgiven. So what is my task? It's interesting when you look at the story. This man is forgiven everything. He should have taken five years in prison to forgive with his family possessions. But the Lord forgave him unconditionally. He goes out, he sees his fellow servant, takes him, puts him in prison for how many? Only 100 denarii. And that is a denarii is only one day's work. And the master takes the slave back, says, you have been unforgiving. I showed mercy. No. And it's interesting what happened the second time. Second time he is not into prison. He is given to the torturers. He has not forgiven. He is not put in prison. So he is given to the torturers. And when will he pay back? He cannot. Now who will have to pay back? Again, his family, his dear friends. Very often we ask ourselves, crime committed or sin committed or vengeance, anger, does it have a punishment? It will have. It will have if we do not turn to the Lord, take his mercy, trust in his mercy. Dear friends, I'm sure when we look at this passage, it's a story for me, it's a story for you. We experience infinite forgiveness from God. But very often we become like this first slave. We excuse ourselves, but accuse others. And we miss God's forgiveness. We never experience his forgiveness and we carry unforgiveness. When we look into our hearts, I'm sure all of us have got people we need to forgive. People we need to experience, show God's mercy. And as we experience God's mercy, dear friends, that is a call. And if I do not express God's forgiveness to another as he gives, I'm sure the state of me will be the same. I will be given to the torturers. And who can pay? Nobody. Dear friends, let us ask the Lord for this gift. Forgiveness is not my gift. It's not human. It is from the Lord as he showed it on the cross. And we need his grace. We need his strength. Yesterday when I said the Mass and at the end, someone asked me, Father, give us an assignment every day like this and we will do. And this could be the best assignment. Maybe a day like today. Maybe look at our hearts, each of us. I look into my heart. Is there someone that I need to forgive? A little more. Maybe if I can move and ask forgiveness, the best. And I'm sure there will be a healing, a healing that comes within. If not, I'm sure we can always express, pray and ask God's pardon and also pray where I need God's gift of forgiveness. The experience of the Holy Eucharist is this, this gift of forgiveness, this mercy that the Lord pours. He breaks himself, he bleeds himself so that his body, his blood can transform us, can make us merciful. May we experience first and most at this Eucharist God's mercy and forgiveness and that we are able to carry it to our own lives, into our families, into our communities. We ask the Lord for this gift. May the Lord be merciful to us and may we be merciful as the Lord calls us.
Let us pray, my dear friends, that this sacrifice of mine and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of our holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall say the Eucharistic prayer for reconciliation, and we ask the Lord, the Eucharistic Lord, to fill us with his mercy and make us merciful. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, you yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again. Adversaries join hands and people see the way of peace together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness and discord is changed into mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless praise with the chorus of heaven, we cry out to your greatness here on earth as without end. We acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners the way by which your peace is offered to you. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of all our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, Jesus himself took the bread into his sacred hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on the same evening, Jesus took the chalice of blessing into his sacred hands, confessing your loving mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the bread of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with this very Spirit that takes away everything that divides us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us always in communion with Francis our Pope, Victor our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together 
with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, the Apostles, the Martyrs, Saint Anthony, Saint John Bosco, and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us a beautiful prayer of love, of forgiveness. We turn to the Lord as we trust in his mercy. Let's be merciful as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from all sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said in the peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Let's offer each other God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away all our sins. Blessed are we who are called to receive him. Lord, Lord not worthy that he should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we receive the Lord spiritually sacramentally into us, as the Lord washes clean by his mercy, forgives all our sins, let's ask the Lord for the gift of mercy, for the gift of forgiveness, that he gives us the power to be merciful as he is to us. May his mercy heal us. May his mercy give us grace to forgive. Prayer for Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
What has passed our lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart, that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for all eternity. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have received save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed and praised be every moment. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We turn to the Lord with all our prayers and intentions. We remember Father Isaac Heme, Father Sephrinus Bakla, Nadia Nongentri, David Destakar, Sister Lita. We remember these people as they celebrate their birthdays. May the Lord keep them in good health and bless all their intentions and their mission. We remember and pray for Jareen and Tina. Who are getting married we ask the lord to bless them today and always in their life we remember and pray for niju k koshi who is on his journey may the lord protect him and keep him in good health we ask the lord for all of the graces blessings we pray for people who are sick who needs god's care and touch and healing we remember and pray especially for the retreat that's are coming we remember all the arrangements the many churches that will be opening May the Lord protect all of us, keep us all in good health. We turn to the Lord, imploring His mercy, that He may make us merciful and truly experience His forgiveness within, that we can be merciful as He is to the Lord. We turn to the Lord to transform us, to heal us from within by His mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your daily beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful Passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his awful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his awful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his awful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Have mercy on us and the whole world. Have mercy on us and the whole world. Have mercy on us and the whole world. 
Have mercy on us from the whole world. Have mercy on us from the whole world. Have mercy on us from the whole world. Have mercy on us from the whole world. Have mercy on us from the whole world. Have mercy on us from the whole world. Have mercy on us from the whole world. I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your Jesus beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, atonement for us and those of the whole world. For the sake of this sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of this sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of this sorrowful passion, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. Have mercy on us from the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of the eternal beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to turn and those of the whole world. For the sake of this sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of this sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. Have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. Have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. Have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. Have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us from the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy mortal one, have mercy on us from the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy mortal one, have mercy on us from the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one. Holy Most One, have mercy on us from the whole world. O Lord, the Lord, Jesus, as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. I trust in you. I trust in you.
Blessed and praised be every moment. Blessed and praised be every moment. Blessed and praised be every moment. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We turn to the Lord with our prayers, intentions, and pray for the gift of mercy as we call. Most merciful and triumph God, we come to you in our weakness, we come to you in our fear, we come to you with trust, for you alone are our hope. We place before you the disease present in our world, we turn to you in our time of need. Bring wisdom to doctors, give understanding to scientists, and our caregivers with compassion and generosity. Bring healing to those who are ill, protect those who are most at risk. Give comfort to those who have lost a loved one. Welcome those who have died into eternal hope. Stabilize our communities. Unite us in our compassion. Remove our fear from our hearts. Fill us with confidence. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I Pray to the Holy Family, Jesus, Jesus Mary and Joseph, whom you be continuous and talk to love, to you return with trust. Holy Family of Joseph, grant that our hearts be true, may we be graceless of many, pray our continuous to God's gospel, and small and sick churches. Holy Family of Nazareth, may our hearts never again experience violence, rejection, and division. May all who have been hurt finally comfort and be. Holy Family of Nazareth, make us aware of the sacredness of the family and its beauty in God's land. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Master Center, let's go in God's love.